So this is our third day of looking at geometrical optics, our first unit for Physics AP. Uh, last day we were seeing how you can have a whole bunch of different uh, possible images for a nice converging lens. And now we're going to play with uh, kind of an awkward lens, a lens that's got a negative focal length to it. Um, I like to just jokingly call it the unhappy lens because uh, it makes me unhappy. And we're going to see exactly what kind of patterning we get. Uh, but this, this lens does have a negative focal length because it tends to diverge the rays, makes them spread out instead of having them come together. Now the first uh, scenario we're going to take a look at is what happens when your object is placed anywhere out here. Let's go past the focal length on the lens. I know the focal length is a negative 10, but if, what if I'm past 10 in this story um, and we've got the object out there at 20? So our location, what about distances that are greater than the focal length? Let me we'll throw some absolute value bars on it because I just want to talk size there. So some rays. Um, let's do the ray diagram first. Uh, one ray that we were drawing last day was a ray that comes off parallel to the principal axis before it gets to the lens, where because of Snell's law, it does a double bend, and we're going to show that as a single bend just because we're lazy. Now, normally, you would go and don't do this yet because it's wrong. You would line up with a focal point after the lens and draw your ray, but that doesn't work, right? This one, being a diverging lens, we have to spread it out. But what you do, and it's kind of a nice little hint here with this negative focal length that says, hey, kind of use the opposite focal point every time you do this. So I'm actually going to line my ruler up with that focal point when I go to draw the rest of this ray. So I'm kind of back aligning my ruler. The back edge of my ruler is located here. And then I'm going to go, oh, OK, double bend. And now the rays go like that. So it's the same story, but you just have to think outside the box a little bit. OK, the next ray. Often we would go line up with the focal point, then go parallel. Well, same plan. We're going to go focal point, then parallel, but we're going to line up with the wrong focal point because it does have a negative focal length to it. So my ruler is aligned with this focal point, and I'm going to then draw the ray that goes and goes and goes and goes and goes until it touches the glass, touches that lens, and now it does a double bend, which, again, being lazy, I'm just going to draw as a single bend. And then after that, it goes nice and parallel off like this. And another ray that can be a just nice little backup is the center ray, one that goes right for the center of the lens. That one does two little bends there that basically cancel each other out, and the ray goes essentially unperturbed through the lens. Okay, well, what I can see is the rays, the rays don't cross out here. Okay, they don't actually touch. So I'm kind of thinking this is not going to be a real image. However, if I go and install a human out here, and just put their eyeball in, right? So there they are looking back. Their brain will say, hey, wait a minute. I think I've got a plan. And your brain essentially back calculates where these rays were coming from. And so your brain will think that these rays are coming from back here somewhere. Let's just extend them back to see where your brain thinks they were all touching each other. Ah, right there. So your brain will be convinced, as long as the glass is nice and clean, that there is actually something out there and that it's located right here. That's where you'll see that arrow, that roadrunner or whatever it is. So it looks like it's here. You'll see it to be there. Okay, so when you have an image that forms on the same side of the lens that the light's coming from, that left side in this case, right, not the opposite side, then that's going to be a virtual image. And the math will actually tell us that too. So let's see if we can roll the math here and see what it actually does for this story. So I've got just a couple of equations. I have this one, 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. And then we have the magnification one, the opposite of di on top of do. OK, first of all, let's play with the focal length one. So 1 over, I'm going to have to say negative 10, because this is a bit of an awkward lens. And then the image, sorry, the object, I should say, distance was chosen to be 20 for us. And then we're looking for the di. So you flip that around in your calculator. It works fine. right? You can say, hey, negative 10, flip that, please. Subtract over the 20 flipped once it comes to that side, and then flip the answer back. We're looking at negative 6.67. 
Okay, so the math is warning you that it's virtual, right, with this negative answer for that image distance. So there's definitely, definitely some clues there mathematically that tells me that it's virtual. Magnification, here's where I can learn the rest of the story. Magnification would be the opposite of the image distance, which is negative in itself. So double negative there, divided by the 20. Tidying that up, that ends up being a positive one third. So it's positive. This is going to be an upright image. As you can see in the picture, it, it looks upright as well. And it's going to be small. In this case, one third is big. When you put the objects past the focal length, you're going to find that they're virtual, or the images they create are virtual, upright, and small. Well, let's, let's move around a little bit. That one was past the focal length. Let's try a few other locations and see what it does there. This time I'm going to put it right at the focal point, right? Right at that, in this case, 10 centimeters away spot. We'll see what it does. So the idea of this example is we're saying, hey, there's, there's kind of one focal length away. What if you were to put the object there? What if DO was equal to the focal length? Well, absolute value, right? Because it's a negative focal length. Okay, well, let's draw the ray diagram first. So I'm going to do my usual rays. I'm going to go parallel on the way in. And then a focal point alignment on the way out. But line up with the wrong focal point, right? The reverse focal point. That's the plan for these weird lenses. The next one was supposed to be focal point in and then parallel out. But again, I'm going to line up with the wrong focal point. So my ruler is lined up over here when I go to draw this ray. And then I stop once I get to the glass and say, okay, done the first part. Then it's going to bend that light beam and it's going to go parallel to the principal axis. And the other one, what about one that actually goes right through the center? Once again, those rays out here, there's no touching. They don't actually ever line up. But I could put a human out here and say, hey, human, stare at that with your eyes that can actually take rays that are diverging like they are there, arrange them on your retina. Where do you think this object actually is? And your brain starts back calculating, right, to come up with this image in its mind of where things actually are. Okay, so if I back calculate, just take these rays that the eyeball gets access to and say, okay, where do you think they came from? Your eyeball says, oh, I know for sure. They came from here. That is not on the after the lens side of the picture. It's on the before the lens side. So this is telling me that, yep, those rays don't touch. They just look like they're touching in a virtual sense. So this is another virtual image. Let's run the math again and see where the math actually puts us for this story. So we would have 1 over negative 10 for the focal length equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over f. Or sorry, 1 over, I should say, di. So negative 10 flipped. Subtract the 10 flipped that comes to the other side. Got a number there. Flip it back. Negative 5. So the math is actually reminding me that, hey, this is virtual by giving me that negative there. It's saying it's not on the side that you'd expect, which would be after the lens. It's actually before the lens. The magnification would be the opposite of that negative 5 divided by the 10. Okay, got a double negative there, so it's going to be a positive 1 half. And so once again, we've got this story where it's upright, right, because of that positive. I can see in the picture as well that it's upright, and it's small. Okay, it's maybe not the same smallness as before, but if I look back at the previous example, yeah, that one was also upright and small. It was one-third as big. This one here is half as big. Now, don't get me wrong. On the previous example, they're not always one-third, but it's always less than one when you're farther than a focal length out. This one here, when you're at the focal length out, in a kind of a absolute value sense, it will be a half as big. Um, so in, in many ways, this is exactly the same story, right? Virtual, upright, small. Okay, well, let's look at the last little zone here. Let's go and take a look at what happens in stories where you put the object closer than a focal length out. Okay, and by focal length, I mean absolute value. Because if I was to write this, I'd say, let's put our object less than a focal length. Oh, that's negative. Let's just put absolute value bars on it.
Okay, let's see where this lens puts it. So I'm going to go towards the lens, parallel, and then line up with the wrong focal point, right? This one here with my ruler. So that's where my ruler's touching right now when I go to draw that. Okay, that worked pretty well. Now let's do it the other way around. Let's go into the lens. And this time we're going to go and line up with the wrong focal point, the one over here with our ruler. So my ruler's touching there when I go to draw that. And then once I get to the glass, it's going to do a double bend because of uh, Snell's law. And it's going to continue off this way. And the backup ray, we can go right through the center of the lens and that one, that one won't really be bent at all. Same story, no touching, right? They do not actually form a real image out here. But like before, in this case, we could install a human and the human would say, hey, give me a second here. Let me let my brain digest this. And your brain's going to back calculate and say, you know what? Looking at these rays that are coming out my eyeball here, I think they all came from there. And you will be convinced that this object is actually right here. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's check out the numbers for that. We'll see what we've got. We would have 1 over a negative 10 for the focal length. We just need to warn the lens that it's a bit odd. 1 over 5 in this case for the object distance. And then 1 over di. When I tried those numbers out, I ended up with a negative answer. So the math is saying, hey, watch out. This thing is uh, weird. This thing is virtual. And it was 3.33 centimeters. So the negative is saying it is not after the glass, which is where you would expect. Right, so I'm just going to go back in our notes here for a second, uh, if I can find it. Where were we talking about the sign chart? Yeah, it was here. So we said if the image is not on the side the light came from, so if it's after the glass, then the DI is positive. So it, it didn't come out positive, it came out to be negative, so it's not after the glass. Right. All right. It's ready to go here again. Let's go and find the magnification for this story. Magnification would be the opposite of the equation naturally has an opposite sign and then negative 3.33 double negative divided by the 5 and that tidies up in simplest terms to a positive two-thirds. So we've got a virtual image because the rays don't actually touch and because the di came out to be negative. It is upright and once again it is small. So every single time you do this, right, when you go to try this out for these diverging lenses, what do we got? Virtual, upright, small. The example before that, virtual, upright, small. Example before that, virtual, upright, small. That's all they ever do. They always create virtual upright small images that you can only really think about with your eyeball. Unlike if I go back to the converging lens where you can actually get the rays to touch. And if you put paper there, you'll actually see it. You can still eyeball it from afterwards because the rays are diverging here. So a person looking out here will see it here, but you can put paper and actually see it land on the paper. Um, but for these ones, no, you can't actually do that. So that is really the only story for diverging lenses. They always create these virtual images uh, that you have to just eyeball. Okay, the second part of the lesson today, we're going to take a look at what happens if you were to do multiple lenses, one lens after another. Now, these diagrams that I have here are horribly not to scale. They're just a little visual aid for us to figure out where things are going to go. Uh, so don't trust them for a ray diagram. But we could put some little marks on here. Looks like the first lens has a focal length of 20, so that's a 20. This one, according to the story, focal length 2 is a 10. So if I was to put some focal points on here, that's 20 out, 20 out. This is 10 out and 10 out. Um, definitely not to scale. There's also this kind of nebulous mention of this length being 48. That's going to be the lens to lens length. So in here, let's say that that is 48 centimeters and so again you can see that my picture is horribly not to scale let's move this 10 make it a little more clear there we go 
Okay, so here's the plan. We just go one lens at a time. For the first lens, it is a 20 centimeter focal length lens, and it looks like the object is placed 60 centimeters away, according to the story right here. So that is a 60. Well, let's go and see what the first lens does. So I would go one over the focal length of 20 is equal to one over the object distance of 60 plus one over di. And when I tried that out, I ended up with a di of positive, so it's real, 30 centimeters. Then I checked out the magnification because I was curious. Of course, it has an opposite sign in it. I would put the positive 30 in divided by the 60. Looks like the magnification for that lens is negative one half. So what does it do? Well, that first lens is going to go and make an image that will be right about here somewhere. It's going to be upside down and small. It's going to kind of look like this. So this is, this is like image number one. Right there. The rays are all going to come down and they're going to actually concentrate right there. But then they're going to diverge again and make their way off to the next lens. So it turns out this is a very easy process to deal with. It turns out it's like links in a chain. When lens number one is finished with this story, it says, hey, all right, I'm going to put an image right here. And so that image from lens number one becomes the object for lens number two. And off we go. We're then going to say, okay, well, what will lens number two do with that? Well, just sort of thinking about dimensions here, this, this first lens parked the image 30 centimeters away. And again, my diagram is horribly not to scale. It's 48 centimeters between the two. So lens number two says, thank you for giving me a nice little object that's 18 away, just 48 minus the 30. And again, I apologize for the diagram really not being to scale there at all, but that's okay. We can keep going mathematically. For lens number two, one over its focal length of positive 10, it's a nice lens. And then the object distance, we'll have a one over 18, and then the image distance, one over di. And so you run the numbers on that on your calculator and you find the image distance is positive, so it's real, it's gonna work after the lens, 22 and a half centimeters. Magnification would be the opposite of 22 and a half, on top of the 18, which if you tidy that up is negative 5 fourths. So that is going to invert the story. It's going to make it slightly larger and park it 22 and a half centimeters away. So a little bigger than this, you know, somewhere out about here, kind of like that. And this distance will be 22 and a half. Okay. Overall, when this thing was done, we did, when we were finished, get this nice positive value for our last image distance. So that's telling me that this whole story is actually going to make a nice real image. There's a neat little thing you can do with the magnifications. If you want to find the overall magnification, okay, oops, can't spell here. If we want to find the total magnification, we can just take magnification one and multiply it by magnification two. So here we could go negative one half multiplied by a negative five fourths, and we end up with positive five eighths. Well, overall, the total magnification came out positive, so when it's finished, the picture should have been upright, and it is. Like, look at that last arrow. It's upright, just like the Roadrunner was at the beginning. And 5 eighths is less than 1, so overall it's a little bit small. And so that's the plan. It's literally just links in a chain. You just go from one lens, creates an image, and then you pick up from there. That'll be the object for the next one. There is one strange thing that can happen in the math, and I just want to use this last example to demonstrate that. So we've got some lenses here again. Looks like the first lens is a 20. The next lens is a 10. Okay, very similar to last time. Uh, they're a little bit different for their, their spacing. We're going to space them 45 centimeters apart. And we're going to put the object a fair bit closer here. We're going to put it at 30 centimeters. So this is going to be a 30 right in there.
Okay, well, let's go and see what lens number one does with this story. We'll just play with that, that lens equation here. 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over 30 plus 1 over di. And it works fine. We get a positive answer, so it's saying, okay, it's after the first glass, and it's 60 centimeters away. You can even do the magnification. It would be the opposite of that 60 divided by the 30, so it's going to be a negative 2. All right, sounds good, until you start to try to figure out where this thing is. It's, it's really big, it's twice as big, it's upside down, and it's got to be 60 centimeters after the first glass. Well, 60 centimeters after the first glass, hey, this is only 45, that puts it after lens number one. That would actually put it like out here somewhere and really big. So this is image one right here, which is actually the object for lens number two. So this is so strange because the light is actually going this way, making its way through those lenses. And as we work with lens number two, our object, right, because image one is going to be object two, It's after the glass. That's not the usual way of doing business. Usually the object is before the glass. But we can warn the math about that just by putting in a negative. So I guess we have to think about numbers here. It was supposed to be 60 centimeters down the road from lens number one. There's a 45 centimeter gap. So it's looking like to me that this distance here, it's late, it's after the glass, but that's gonna be a 15. Okay, here we go. We're going to move on into lens number two. So for lens number two, we've got 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over negative 15 plus 1 over di. And that's okay. We can put a negative object distance in and let the math run with it. In this case, the math actually comes back with a positive answer. Doesn't always do that, but here this time it did. Positive 6. That's a little low on sig figs there. Some people say 6.0. Check out my magnification. I would have the opposite of a 6 divided by a negative 15. And that magnification ends up being a positive 2 fifths. Okay, so overall magnification. Magnification total would be a negative 2 multiplied by a 2 fifths. So we end up with negative 4 fifths when it's all said and done. My final image distance did come out to be a nice positive value. Okay, so that says it's actually going to work. Okay, you'll actually find an image out there. In fact, it's supposed to be 6 centimeters after lens number two and it will not have inverted it again so it's still going to be upside down it's going to be like this okay two-fifths as big as this purple one so I don't know something kind of like that so there is image two so overall grand scheme of things this thing this combination of lenses has given us um, a real image because it was positive 6. It really will form rays there. It is going to be inverted overall because of the negative on the 4 fifths. And 4 fifths is a little bit less than 1, so it's a little bit small. So sure, it's just links in a chain, but you do have to be a little bit careful when you can have objects that are after lens number 2. Uh, it didn't make any sense at the time. But way back here, we actually wrote that rule down. We said that if the object is on the side the light comes from, then you can call the DO positive. That happens so many times, right? Like 99 times out of 100. But for us, for this last one, the object was after the lens. It was not on the side the light came from. And so that's why just for lens number two, just for lens number two, we said, whoa, this, this thing we're working with is not on the side the light comes from. So we just warned the math about that. We just went and said, okay, no big deal. We'll just go and put this minus sign in, right? And that warns the math that the object's actually after it. 
So generally speaking, multiple lenses, you just look at it as links in a chain. When one lens is finished with it, the next lens picks up from there. But sometimes you have to be a little creative with your minus signs.